to my channel. Today we are working on to part 5 of our Dalmatian tutorial and that means we're starting this ear. Now with the ear we're going to get the black spots in first and then work the white fur around it. It's going to be easier for us to uh, get the darkest parts in first rather than working from the white fur to the dark fur. Uh, just a little pre-warning there. <laughs> Everything you need is listed in, listed in the description below. Uh, that includes parts, uh, all the links to the previous parts. Uh, where you can find the reference photo and line art and yeah let's get started okay so i've just zoomed you in so that you can see the ear where we are going to be working and as usual i'm going in with my warm gray one as a base layer and i'm going to press quite hard now we're going to really smooth out the grain of this paper especially as we are going to be working with the darker colors and i'm working on the corner of this ear at the moment so i'm following that darker spot shape and I'm just going to bring in this little corner here so it's like a little teardrop shape here and I'm only bringing in this corner here first because this area is dark and this will help us get that little fold in the ear correct. I'm then taking the cold grey 6 first now we are going to go in with the black but I just want a bit of a bluish undertone here a bit of depth in this ear so I'm just going to use the cold grey 6 over the top light pressure i'm not pressing too hard here you don't need to press very hard at all and i'm just following where i've got that base layer applied so you can see it doesn't take much much pressure you don't need a lot and then we're going to come in with the black press down harder now we are going to come over with a lot of these white hairs. We're going to apply some white hairs on this ear, but we'll do that at the very end. Okay. Right, now that we've got our darkest black in, we can come back in now with our warm grey one and apply it as a base layer just where you can see all of this spot. So we've got like a dark edge to this ear basically and that is what I'm going to be bringing in along this dark edge. Not, it's not going to be black here, it's probably going to be bit, bits of greys and maybe walnut brown mixed in just to warm up this part of the ear um, and that's coming yeah, about there. So I'm going to do this section first. Um, so yeah, I am going to take my walnut brown very lightly and I'm going to come along here. Now remember this is the edge of the ear so we are going to get a sharp line here and we want that sharper line just to show that this is the edge of the ear. And then I'm just going to use very light pressure just to apply almost like another base layer and this is walnut brown. I'm then going to take my Payne's Grey and I'm going to bring in this Payne's Grey and now this Payne's Grey I am making sure follows uh, the fur direction so it's curving around this ear so we're making sure we're getting the shape of this ear mapped in nicely And then I'm just tapering those strokes so we're getting lighter strokes. Okay, so you've got a nice brown edge and then you've got the Payne's Grey fading into it. I'm then going to come in with my black along this edge. over the Payne's Grey and again tapering that off and then as we've come in with this black we can now see how dark we can go with that edge of the ear so I'm going to take my Payne's Grey again and just come in and darken this edge and then making sure I get that really sharp edge drawn in there 
and then I can take that black again any areas that I just think want to go darker so like this corner here so don't be afraid to use your black in your drawings obviously I, I have lots of layers of colour underneath my blacks uh, for added depth but if you need to just go if you want to go straight in with black in areas where it is black feel free um, and then the paint's grey again and I'm just going to darken up the rest of this little spot down here um, I'm actually going to take the one grey three uh, at the bottom of this ear because it's a lot lighter so I'm just going to take the one grey three and making sure that we're blending back over everything now I'm taking the one grey one and I'm going to make sure that I cover the rest of where this spot is on this ear and we're going to get this spot properly mapped in so we're going to get all these darker spots at the top of the ear mapped in um, actually I think we're going to get all the dark spots mapped in so that the black is in and then all we need to do is work on the little bit of white that's on this ear because there's quite a lot of black spots going on which makes a nice change as well because we've done a lot of white fur but hopefully you've um, learn quite a bit doing this white fur it's a bit subtle is this white fur it's not as many um colors um i am going to do a pure white tutorial though and we're going to get one where there's loads of colors going on um i'm also taking the paints gray and i'm just coming back down here right so i've just darkened up the edge of that ear ever so slightly and then once again, I'm coming in with the Payne's Grey, making sure that we're following that curve of the ear. So we've got this part of fur sort of curving up here, and then it's curving downwards. And then coming down. So keeping in mind that this fur is curving down the ear. And we do have a lot of little white hairs, but like I say, I'm adding all my white hairs that are coming over these black spots at the end. If you want to add them in now with the indenting method, um, or as you go along with a white pencil, feel free to do. Um, some of these white hairs we might not even add in, because remember, we're making this our drawing. So it doesn't need to be exact to the reference photo. This isn't any for anybody. Nobody's going to see the reference photo. So you can do this drawing however you would like. Okay, so that's the Payne's Grey. I'm then going to go over the top of this Payne's Grey with a warm grey six. And this is just going to knock back some of those blues, but also just add a deeper colour to this area of the spot. Now I know that I need to darken up this black area again. So it's just a bit of back and forth as usual. Lightening and darkening up areas. And that's completely fine. You just take your time. If you've gone in really, really dark with your pressure straight away, then that's fine. You don't need to do it the same way as me, exactly. If you've found a technique that works for you and you think, you know what, I can do this myself, go ahead. That's what I want to get to. I want to get to a stage where you guys feel really happy with the work you're producing and don't need my guidance. So this is the black. So I've just darkened up this corner again and the side of that um, ear. So I'm coming back in with the Payne's Grey to keep darkening up here. And then I'm going to come back over here with the Payne's Grey. Just very lightly. I'm not pressing hard, just glazing over the top of that warm grey. And then I'm going to take the warm grey free. And this is just going to help blend and smooth out this spot because you don't really see much of the fur detail there is a little bit there but by following the fur direction we've got in some of that fur detail so we're just smoothing it out a little bit and then you can come back in with your Payne's grey and you can add in some of those little hair details so we've got a dark patch here and we've got a little bit here so just a few little details don't need many just a few little hairs and there we have our first spot
Right, we now have a little spot kind of on the edge of the ear at this side. So again with a warm grey one, just basically mapping in the shape. And it doesn't matter if you bring some of that warm grey one outside of where that spot is. We can blend it into the white fur. So I'm just kind of getting a general idea of where that spot is. And then I'm going to come in again. Uh, am I going to use the Payne's Grey? Um, yes, with the Payne's Grey. Very lightly though. It's not as dark as the other spot. And again, I'm just mapping in some of those fur lines that I can see. I'm also going to take the uh, one grey free over the top of that Payne's Grey. It's just going to knock back some of that colour. And then back in with the Payne's Grey, just for a little definition of those lines. And that's another spot drawn in. See, not taking long at all. Now, as we come down this side of the ear, we have quite a bit of the black spot blending into the white fur. We're going to kind of ignore that bit. We're going to focus on the bigger chunk of the black spots. Um, I hope that makes sense, because when we've got the white fur in, we can then come in with the details of the black spot. So I'm going to start with the large spot that we've got going on here and I'm coming down to the bottom of this ear first. So we're going to work from left to right, I had to think about that then, <laughs> with this spot. So I'm bringing down the edge with a warm grey one as a base layer. And just get in again, general shape. Now we're mapping in these spots first because if we went in with the warm grey one as the base layer it's quite a light ear and I don't want people getting confused with the white fur and the spots so if you ever have a commission or you're ever doing a drawing of a dog or whatever and it's got spots that are similar your base layer will be similar colour to the area around it go in with the darker parts obviously we say work from light to dark but if it's going to be easier for you to get these areas mapped in first then make it easier for yourself. There's no right or wrong. There we go. So I'm just literally following the shape. Coming up the ear. I'm ignoring the white hairs. Um, I'm ignoring them because I'm going to add them in afterwards. If you've indented them, make sure you indent before you come in with your colour. Um, and I may, may not add as many. We will see. So again, I'm following this. And I'm not worried about my graphite lines here because it's going to be dark. They're going to get hidden. If it was just the white fur, if this was just a white ear, then I would remove these graphite lines. Right, now, as we come up here, we've got some folds in the ear. So to make that easier for myself, I'm not going to cover this whole spot. We're going to come up here where we've got a fold. And we're just going to follow the shape of that fold and map in the top of this spot. And this will make it easier to just draw in the shapes and contours of this ear. So I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. And then I'm just going to colour uh, color in <laughs> as a base layer of this one great one. Okay, so we've got a nice big base layer. So along the top here, I'm actually just going to come in with the Van Dyke Brown. Not quite as dark as the Walnut Brown, but it's quite light up here. Oops, sorry. So I'm just going to come in with the Van Dyke Brown. And again, I'm constantly making sure that my fur is going in the correct direction. Like so. So I've not done a lot of area, just enough. And then I'm going to take the dark sepia just in this corner here and where we've got that fold I'm just going to darken along that edge a little bit and then we're going to go back to the Payne's Grey and I'm going to use the Payne's Grey along the rest of this ear so back covering all of that base layer with the Payne's Grey this is building up another layer 
So it's all, it can be sometimes all about building up several base layers and then coming in with your um, final details once you've built up that colour. Making sure we're getting a fairly straight edge there with that ear. Along the edge of that spot. And coming down there a little bit. And again, I'm making sure following that fur direction. Even as I'm building up. Oops, that was the post. <laughs> so again, just using this Payne's Grey. You could also use, if you wanted your ear to be a bit cooler in tone, you could use your dark indigo and um, a bit more bluish tones would come through then. Again, I'm ignoring those white fur, uh, fur lines. I'm just constantly looking back. I know I go a bit quiet. I'm looking back at my reference photo all the time, and making sure that I'm following the direction of this fur. And it's a big area to cover. It is a large area, but we'll break it down into smaller sections as we start building up depth and... Um, detail into this area we just want to just slowly add another base layer across the whole of this ear and it makes sense to do it all at once And then as I come up to where we've got the dark sepia, I'm just going to blend it over ever so slightly, but I'm not going to cover all of that part with the paint's grey. And then we've just got this section here, so again, constantly looking at the reference photo and drawing in the direction that I can see it. Okay, so we've covered all of this here. We've got quite a bit of base layers going on. So it's just about building up these colours now and detail. Right, so we're going to break it down to make it easier to build up the colours and make it darker. So we're going to work on like this half of the spot first. So I'm taking my Payne's Grey again and I'm just going to use harder pressure so you can see the difference in pressure. Now that I'm pressing a bit harder between that colour and that layer. So you're not, I've not been pressing very hard as I've been building up my layers. Don't worry if you pressed harder because I'm going to get to the same kind of colour that you will have. It's just that I, I, I take my time. Build it up light, light layers over time. And we're just going to do this first half. So I'm just going to come in. If I show you to about here, where, where you would have the white fur. So we'll focus on this as an individual spot. And again, following that fur direction. But you can just see the difference between the amount of pressure that I've been applying. Now, I know on the line art that I actually included the um, collar, but I think what we're going to, I'm actually going to do on my drawing is I'm actually going to fade out the neck before we even get to that collar. Um, so, um, actually, I think I may, I can change the line art before I give it to you guys. So, ignore me. <laughs> um, I have actually, so obviously I'm filming it ahead of time. Um, and I have drawn it with the collar, but I quite like the idea of fading out the neck because the, the neck isn't in focus. The neck is quite blurred. Um, so that means that we can get a nice faded look to the neck. So we'll do that. 
I'm thinking ahead, as you can see, while we're building up this layer. <laughs> so that hopefully that might mean then maybe I'll finish it in the next part. A nice short tutorial. Right, so got the paints grey mapped in. I'm just going to come in with the walnut brown in this centre here. Again, looking at the fur direction, making sure that we're always, always, always going in that fur direction. And then I'm going to take the warm grey six. And again, I'm going over all of this where there's darker tones. So like along the side of this ear. And you can do this with the black. Um, I'm just doing it with a warm grey six. Pressing fairly hard. Making sure I've got a nice sharp edge for that um, ear. And along here, this bit needs to be darker. So I'm taping those edges, so I'm lifting my pencil up as I bring those pencil strokes down. And I'm just going to bring some of this warm grey six along the top of this ear as well. And in this corner. Then take my warm grey free. And I'm using hard pressure now and I'm just kind of, I'm using this like we use the white to burnish. Harder pressure, I'm not pressing as hard as I would with the white. But I'm using this to just blend and all these colours together and just get a nice smooth look to this ear. And then we can come on top of all of this with our details. So this is our tonal values, this is all the colours that we can see in the ear. That's all now built up. And then I'm going to come in with my black and I'm just going to add in some detail. So I've got a sharp pencil and I'm just going to again follow the fur direction and just add in some detail. Now a lot of the detail will come once we've got the white fur in as well. We can blend and get some really nice tapered lines going on. I'm going to take the Payne's Grey and I'm just going to use the Payne's Grey to build up some of the texture in the middle of this ear. Okay, so you can see just the difference once we've built up the layers. This is only two layers and this is obviously more layers now. So we're just going to do the same again. I'm just going to Harder pressure with the Payne's Grey. Again, following fur direction. Now we've got a few more contours going on in this ear, so we're going to make sure that we get these little contours in. Um, and that'll come once we've um, added on a couple more layers. You see I'm just following the shape of the fur, applying a bit more pressure. You can see the difference between the pressure here to here. Okay, so that's 
some layers in. I'm now going to take my dark sepia. And with the dark sepia, I'm just going to start mapping in this darker contour line. I feel like, actually, I want to get some of this ear drawn in as well. But we'll do it section by section. So, darker contour line with a dark sepia. So this is very short pencil strokes, creating almost a harsh edge there, but blending it outwards along here. And then here, I'm going to use the dark sepia again using curved lines to create the contour that's going on here. So you can kind of see I've got a little contour line going on. Just kind of darkening that up. And blending outwards into that Payne's grey area. And along here I've got a little contour. So it's just little veins in the ear because it's such short fur, we're going to start seeing them. And I'm just going to darken this edge here. It's not much, just little bits. And then I'm going back with my walnut brown. Again, I'm always making sure I'm following that fur direction. I say it all the time, but even as you're building up the layers, the fur can change directions just with one layer that you've added to the piece. Which is why, even as I'm building up these layers, I'm still looking back at that fur direction, making sure that I'm following that fur. And I'm just going to lighten it off as we get to that edge there. And then I'm going to take the one grey free, just like we did, and just add a pressure. So you can see we need to darken this ear up quite this section of the ear up quite a bit. But we've got the general shape in there. We can see some of the contours. It's exactly what we want with this ear. So I'm going to come in first with a black light pressure, and I'm just going to really build up some of these contour lines. along here lighter pressure there and there's a little contour going on in here so it's not I've not pressed hard and I'm just gonna darken here as well and then I'm gonna go back to the Payne's grey harder pressure once again and you can see now I'm starting to build up some detail within the fur on this ear. And as I build up each layer, I'm pressing harder with the pencils to really get that pigment down on the paper. And then I'm going to take the dark sepia again. Once again, I'm darkening this contour. It's quite a dark area, this spot. So we're making sure we're really getting those darker tones coming through. I'm actually going to take the cold grey six. And I'm just going to come over with the cold grey six. really darken this up and then back to the black just to blend between these two spots so we want it to look like it's one spot remember even though we've worked in sections blend it out so it looks like it's all being done together it all looks like it's one area and you can see it's just a bit of back and forth, building up this layer, but it doesn't take as long as it could do. So this is still with the black, and I'm just darkening up any areas where I feel I just want it to be a little darker. And then I'm just going to take the warm grey 6, 
just in this area along the top now this area is going to blend out into the white fur which is why I've not gone right up to the edge I'm going to make sure that that really does blend out okay so that's nearly there with this spot right so let's do this corner part here so um i feel like have i missed an area here oh no it's okay i'm looking at the wrong part of my reference photo see this is why we need to focus <laughs> right uh cold gray six i'm coming in with first and i'm coming in over the top of all of this layer i thought i was going crazy then I missed a whole area of the ear. So, cold grey six. And then I'm just going to take the Van Dyke brown again over the corner here. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up my Payne's Grey for this corner. Again, we're using hard depression now. We want to start darkening this spot or this area of the spot up. Obviously, it comes further down. So a bit of a hard depression now. And then I'm just going to lighten my pressure as I blend it over that Van Dyke brown. And then the dark sepia. over the top and remember we've got a darker line here so I'm just going to use circular motion so I'm doing sort of short circular motions just to darken that line and I can go over that line with the black and then I'm going to take the long grey free over all of that area and then you can go back in with your dark sepia and just a few little hair details. So it doesn't take it doesn't take long. Once you've got that those base layers in and those colours in, to build it up, it doesn't take long at all. Right, I'm actually just going to take my black and I just want to map in the shape of this ear fold so that when I come in and add all the base layer, I know where this ear fold is. And because it's black, I'm, I, I don't mind coming straight in with the black. I can darken, just press hard, you can darken it straight away. Now, ideally you would build it up, but or ideally I, I would. Personally, I would build it up, but you can, this is what I'm saying, like, if an area is black, you can come straight in with a black and just add to that black. So we've got the ear fold there, so now we can come in with our warm grey one for the rest of the shape here. And we'll do this section first, this little bit here. We'll do it section by section. And then I'm going to take the Van Dyke Brown along this edge again. And blend it downwards um, and then I'm going to take the dark sepia where we've got that fold here blend that outwards and blend that black outwards there as well so this is like another fold so I'm just following shapes fur direction with the dark sepia and then I'm going to take the Payne's grey I'm not going over the Van Dyke Brown with the Payne's Grey, just going over the dark sepia and in that little gap that we've got going on. So you can see we're just building up tonal colours. And now I'm just going to start really building it all up. So I'm just coming in once again with the Van Dyke Brown. Back to the dark sepia. Again, I'm looking at that fur direction. Payne's grey over the dark sepia area. And 
Okay, and then I'm going to take the Cold Grey 6 over the Van Dyke Brown, making sure I'm blending into that area that we've already drawn. And I'm going to blend that downwards a little bit into the Payne's Grey. And then I'm going to take the Warm Grey 6, because I feel this is a bit of a warmer colour in here. So the Warm Grey 6. And then the warm grey three over where we've just done that warm grey six. You see how that really smooths out that area? And then I'm just going to take my black, blend that section ever so lightly, and then build up that little fold again here. Blend it out. So by blending out, I'm doing little tapered strokes either direction. And then I'm just going to take the Payne's Grey in this area, a little bit down here. Okay, so we've got that little corner done, so our little ear is really starting to come along now. So, before we go any further, I think what I want to do now is actually get this white fur in on this section of the ear. Because uh, this area is quite dark, so we've now got our main spots mapped in. So the easiest way now is for us to really work on the rest of this white ear and then we can work our way down the ear. So I'm just going to take my Payne's Grey. Um, I just need to make sure it's sharp. We do have a little spot hiding behind the back of this ear. So take, make sure your Payne's Grey is sharp or your grey, whichever grey you're using. And just no detail, just a little line and that's going to fade out. So there's no details, just a few little lines. And then I've got the cold grey one and I'm very lightly. Oh, I just need to erase that graphite. Along the top of this ear, I'm going to use the oops, cold grey one. So I'm not pressing too hard. We want it to be fairly subtle. And I'm going to bring that. Still following the shape of that fur. Always, always, always. You'll, you'll be sick of me saying it. <laughs> so we've only done a little bit of the cold grey, but we've uh, mapped in that top half of the ear. Then got my ivory and just over, very lightly, going to glaze over top with the ivory and then we're going to just use our white which we just need to sharpen mine and you're going to use your white to burnish the paper so pushing harder really pushing that pigment into the paper now Right, let's get back to this. Uh, the door went, so right, back in with the cold grey one. Um, we've got some detail going on in here, so I'm just going to darken up now and blend into that spot. And I'm also going to take the paint grey and we're just going to bring in some of this detail. So some of these looser hairs coming over. Some little details now. And it's these fine details that are really going to help make a piece. And I'm just using the Payne's Grey to do these little details from this ear. So I'm dragging the colour up through that ear and into the cold grey colour there. And then I'll come back in with the cold grey and just go over the top just to help that blending. Okay, so we've got some other little details that we need to add. So I'm just taking my warm grey free and I'm just bringing in some of these little fur details that we can see. So this is just shadows, clumps of little fur that we just started to see on this ear. And that's all I'm bringing in. It doesn't have to be accurate, you just want that illusion that the fur is just popping up in little places there. And then you can go over that again with the cold grey one very lightly and then I'm just going to take the white once again just really burnish that paper 
and I'm going over that spot that we also drew in just to really blur it and make it look out of focus. So you can see now we're really starting to build up the details. Just going to bring in a few more with this warm grey fray. And I'm also going to take my beige red and very lightly with the beige red just go over this area that we've just marked in very lightly just want a glaze of this colour don't want it to be too obvious just a little bit and the cold grey one just behind this ear just going to darken this little bit up blend it outwards there beige red okay right let's keep coming down this ear so I'm going to take the cold grey one again and once again making sure I'm following that fur direction As I come down the ear, and I'm coming about halfway down here with the cold grey one. Just going to get my uh, tombow, I'm just going to raise this graphite line before it becomes too prominent. Okay, one and then back over very lightly with the ivory. And then before we take the um, white, actually, I'm just going to bring this cold grey one a bit further down to about here. It's getting a bit warmer in colour there. So I'm just going to bring. Cold grey one further down and take the ivory once again over the top there and then I'm going to get my warm grey one in this corner I've left a little gap there where we've got a highlight and I'm just going to use the warm grey one and I'm blending over that cold grey one and ivory section there as well. And then you can get your white and just blend and burnish these two sections. Okay, and then I'm just going to take that white over that highlight and then I'm going to take my ivory very lightly. The ivory will act as a nice golden highlight along there. And then my warm grey two for this corner and again following that fur direction and I'm just going to build up some colour but I'm also adding a little bit of detail with these pencil strokes. And this is all with the warm grey two now. Blending down into that spot. Remember, we want it to look like these spots are just part of the fur, but the fur is just changing into dark fur, which is why we're always, always blending. And we have a little contour here, so we're making sure we're following that contour and the fur lines. Okay, so hopefully you can see that we've got a little contour going on here, and we've got some warmer fur there. I'm also going to take my cinnamon along here. Over the top of that one grey two. And then I'm just going to take the one grey two once again. And then if you need to, just want a bit more darker than texture, I'm just coming in with a gold. Really making sure that this the gold is really following the fur direction. Okay, so you can start to see now we're really getting some nice form and shape to this white fur on this ear. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to add the base layer across the whole of this ear. So, cold grey one. And I'm not pressing hard when I do this cold grey one. I'm just following the fur direction just to get in some general shape and colour pigment down on the paper. 
Now a lot of this is just going to be detail based, which is why I'm just very lightly with a cold grey one, bringing it across all of this here. And we've got a few contours that we need to add. And then we can just burnish, but hopefully you can see the difference now. But now that we've added those black spots in, we've really got this nice contrast between the white fur and the spots. And you can get, we could have we could have done a liver Dalmatian, you could have done brown spots. Now if you if you have a brown spot, um, I would have probably used ivory as my base layer, instead of like the warm greys um, as my base layers. I tend to use my ivory more as a base layer, or my warm grey one, depends, um, for the liver coloured dogs. Which if you did the spaniel you will have seen. Right, so that's the cold grey one applied everywhere. And just down here I'm going to apply the ivory. Very lightly, I'm not pressing hard at all, I don't want it to look yellow. Just very lightly glazing over the top of that cold grey one in areas. And again, making sure I'm following fur direction when I do this. And then over the top of all that, I'm going to take my white. And just pushing some of that colour. Right, now we can build up some of the contours and details within this ear. So, warm grey one, I just need to sharpen mine. We're going to get some details with a warm grey one, so you want a nice sharp pencil. And then with the warm grey one, I'm following this contour that we started here, and I'm just going to bring it up along this ear. Pressing fairly hard, not, not too hard, but enough so that we can see the pigment and we can see the colour change to make this look like a nice contour and we will darken this area up and I'm going to bring that all the way up here again making sure I'm following as I'm building up these contours I'm still following that fur direction And then I'm going to take my warm grey two again, just going over and just darkening this contour where it needs to be darker. And then I can take my cold grey one and blend over just to blend this nicely in. I could also take actually my um, cold grey two. And with the cold grey too, I can just bring in some little details. So some little strokes of the fur, just to show where that fur direction's going. Just little extras that you can add. And then I'm just going to grab my um, Payne's grey. And I'm just going to bring in some of this black spot, little details. So it's nice and sharp pencil. Some darker fur strokes. Just because we know that these spots aren't particularly solid and again I'm just going to bring this in a little bit more along there so you can see we've just got a little bit of detail going on and I'm doing this with the um, cold grey too there going back to my warm grey too because I just want to darken up this contour line I'm actually going to use circular motions here just to really try and darken this up and that'll just help with a blend And then you can just stack it up along here. And again, I'm coming from this spot. We've got some dark fur here. So once again, with a warm grey too. Now we need to add in this dark bit, bits of fur that we can see. So we'll do that in a minute. Just going to do the warm grey too. And then once again, I am going to take my Payne's grey. And... With the Payne's Grey, we're going to map in these darker shapes. 
So I'm coming in here and I can see that there's a little line there and then just following the fur direction. Again, this doesn't have to be accurate. We're not doing this for somebody. This is an original piece. So I'm just making sure that the fur is going in the general direction and that I'm getting the general shapes. I'm also going to take my warm grey six. Um, it's a bit too blue is that. So I'm just going to go over the warm grey six. And again, we're going to bring out some lines. Just need to sharpen this. So I've got a nice sharp warm grey six and I'm just going to, once again, following the shapes. So the, the, line, the fur lines here are kind of curving. They're not fully straight. They're just the curving round. And I'm going to blend that into that ear just so it all blends nicely. Bring some of these curves round. And this is what's going to really bring this ear to life. These little extra details. So spend your time on them. Again, there's no rush. And do all of this at your own leisurely time. So I'm just breaking up the fur. And then a few little stray black hairs. I'm going to bring some of the black hairs up there. This is all just using the warm grey six and a sharp point. I'm not pressing very hard, as you can see, and I'm tapering those edges. So I'm lightening my pencil strokes as I get to the edge. And then we can come back over with the cold grey two. And I'm just going to go over the edge of these and just blend it outwards. So again, taper those pencil strokes outwards. And this is just going to soften it off. And then I'm just going to bring in some little pencil strokes, any details that you see. And I'm doing this for the cold grey tone. You can see I'm not pressing hard. I'm going to take my warm grey two again and just use this for some of the details as well. Few pencil strokes and then you can take your white over the top really really blend that out okay I just want to darken that so I'm just going to take my warm grey free I don't think this contour is dark enough I'm just going to take my warm grey free I'm not pressing hard very lightly and I'm just going to darken here blend it outwards So anyway, I'm just not quite happy where the warm grey 2 is, just not quite dark enough. Just taking that warm grey 3 and I'm happier with that. Right, let's get the rest of this spot done. So back to the warm grey 1 and I'm just going to use the warm grey 1 where I can see where we've got some of this darker fur for this spot. And I am going to leave a gap now where we've got a bit of this crossover between the white and the black fur. I'm just going to leave a gap there. And we've got a little spot on this edge here as well. So the darker spots have got a warm grey worn base layer. Um, and all of, all of this is going to be warm grey worn. Okay, so I'm just applying the warm grey worn now across all of this remaining ear that needs the darker spots adding. And just leaving a little gap there. So remember along the edge of the ear we've got a bit of a harsher line. We are going to curl the fur around that ear but it's not going to be as soft a line as some of the other places we've got. And I'm pressing fairly hard with the warm grey one just to get a nice base layer down. And that's just for me to work on top of. Okay so I do have a spot right here that I'm just going to go straight in with the black and I'm just going to 
curve curve lines just curving it around it's not a large spot so i'm just coming straight in with the black and you could always take your paints gray and just glaze over it just to give it a bluish tinge not necessary but doesn't take much to do that spot now i'm going to take the uh walnut brown again very lightly and i'm just going to almost apply in another base layer but we're not pressing as hard we're just glazing the walnut brown on top of this warm gray one And I'm doing this across all of this part of the ear that's left to draw in, this spot. So you can see the black fur actually takes longer to draw because you've got to build it up layers than the um, white fur does. Okay, and then I'm going to take the Payne's Grey, especially here, and we're going to darken and just lighten it up towards those edges. So I'm pressing medium pressure now, pressing a little harder. Now, all, obviously we've got a lot of white hairs to build up. I'm just going to darken all of this inside of this ear. Uh, we've got a lot of white hairs to add, but I'm not going to add them in this part of the tutorial. Um, if you want to add them, you can, but it's just going to look like a black ear for now. Um, and once I've got the rest of the Dalmatian drawn in, um, I'm going to then come in with all the white fur that we need to add over some of these spots. I'm going to bring this Payne's Grey all along here as well. And I'm just going to lighten the pressure as we come down to the corner of this ear because it's a bit lighter down there. So as I'm doing the edge of this ear, what I'm doing is I'm actually sort of curving my pencil lines along the, this edge so that you're getting almost like a natural curl. So that my pencil strokes are like that along this edge. Oops. Hopefully a bit sh straighter than that. And then straighter lines. I'm then going to take my dark sepia especially in this corner and I'm going to darken along the top here I'm going to take my warm grey 6 and I'm going to use hard pressure now with the warm grey 6. Again, following that fur direction. So I can see that needs to just be a bit more this way. And it needs to be a bit darker there. So where I need it to be a bit darker, I'm just pressing harder and I'm going to blend that outwards. So that this area is darker but then we're getting lighter and it's going to get a bit lighter on that edge of that ear there as well and along here so i'm leaving you can see i'm leaving like a lighter gap there so i can blend into that white a little bit of fur I've got a bit of a contour on the ear coming down here as well. And I'll just blend that. I'm not pressing as hard there, just blending that bit out a little bit. And then I'm going to take my warm grey free. And obviously we're going to press hard now and just really blend and burnish and smudge these colours together, I guess. So now I can see, now that I've darkened this up, we know where we need to darken. So I'm going to go back in with the Payne's Grey. And this is where details and we can just darken some of these areas up. Along here. Just 
I'm just going to use a straight, try and tidy that view up. Okay, before I do any more of that, I'm going to take my cold grey one, where we've got this white fur. Pressing fairly hard there. A bit harder on this edge, and then I'm going to lighten it up as I go into that middle of that here. And take the ivory very lightly again. And then you're going to take your white, burnish that layer. Then you can blend some of that darker spot into it. That'll help give you some natural colouring. Don't want to push too much of that pigment around, but it does help. And then I'm going to go back to my Payne's Grey and just going to start bringing in some of this black spot. So I'm not, not dragging too much pigment down, but we just want it to look natural. Remember, we don't have these harsh edges. And a lot of this these spots will look more natural once we start bringing in some of these whiter hairs. At the moment, we're just blending the darker hairs in and we have um, haven't got the black uh, the white hair, sorry, blended in. I'm going to take the warm grey six. I think I prefer it when I use the warm grey six for these hairs. Yeah, the warm grey six is nicer. Just some hairs, and again, following. And if you want to darken any areas on your ear with the long grey six, you can do. Okay, and I'm just going to take the beige red along the bottom of this ear and blend it outwards. Just got a little bit of a pink tone along that edge there. Um, okay, I'm pretty happy with that ear. We now have a ear. Let me zoom you out. Okay, so here is our Dalmatian so far. We've now added the ear. So our next part will be just to finish off the neck and fade out the neck. Darken up, obviously we need to darken up here now. Now that the ear is in, you can see we really need a shadow underneath where this ear is. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this part of the tutorial. If you have, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I'll see you in the next part where we move on to the neck. Bye, everybody.